Hey everybody, I am here today to talk to you about grief and the stress that causes in your body and some things you can do to take care of yourself. I'm Darcy. I'm the creator of the Vibrant Woman course and community. I'm also a founding member of MAF Method Certified um, Health Coaches and Practitioners, and I'm a grieving daughter. So some of you know that my dad passed away last year just before Christmas, and um, what's really interesting is I think I feel the grief more now this year um, than I did last year. I mean, I felt acute sadness and um, lots of other things last year, right? You know, his immediate passing, but which was no surprise. Um, so I think I felt relief as well. But the point is, this is like the anniversary year for us. You know, I'm, I'm just about to the date, the one year anniversary of when he passed. And so I'm finding all of these thoughts and feelings emerge that um, are reminding me of things that I did with my dad, um, things I had to do for my dad, um, and there's just a lot of grief. And grief doesn't necessarily just mean sadness, right? So if you've lost someone, if you had a major life transition, we experience grief for all different reasons. Um, but what I want to talk about for just a couple minutes today is the way that it impacts the physical health of our body and then um, what are some of the trickle down effects of that. So for example, I'm noticing that my grief is really impacting my brain function, okay? It affects my memory, it affects my creativity, it affects my sleep. Um, all of those are neurological functions and um, I'm finding that it affects my ability to articulate, so it's affecting my language. As a writer and a speaker and somebody who makes her living <laughs> pretty much using language, you know, this is kind of a heavy, it's a heavy thing. Um, here's the other thing. I'm noticing um, my body feeling very heavy and craving sweets. So if you've been following me at all, we did this two-week carb challenge a couple of weeks ago, you know that I... I do not tolerate sugar. I advocate that people don't eat or buy sugar. We'll talk more about the reasons for that um, as we go along together. But it's enough to say for today that when you are stressed, when you're physically stressed in your body and your adrenal glands um, are fatigued or becoming fatigued, one of the early signs of that is a craving for sweets and for carbohydrates. We tend to call them comfort foods. Um, and they are abundant this time of year due to cultural habits that are not really good for us, okay? The other complicating factor is where I live in the Northern Hemisphere, we are almost to the winter solstice, which means it's almost the darkest day of the year. I'm dealing with far less sunlight, with wintry weather, being outside less, and having my skin exposed less. So all of those factors contribute to our adrenal function. And if your adrenals are low, you're also gonna feel just anywhere from a little bit to a lot, sad, depressed, and anxious. So combined with the anniversary year of my dad's passing, I've got a lap full of grief, okay? And the way that it's really showing up for me is um, in my sleep. I'm not able to get a full night's sleep right now, recently, and I'm craving a lot of sweets. So I just wanted to give you a couple of tips and tell you the ways that I'm dealing with this to see if this helps anybody. You know, being a vibrant woman doesn't mean uh, being happy all the time right? It does, you are not always at our best. And I talk a lot about this in terms of the moon cycles. We follow the moon. She doesn't shine bright every night and um, neither do you. This is also seasonal, right? So there's a harvest season, there's a planting season, there's a fallow season. So we need to allow these times in our life. If I'm not feeling creative, I'm not going to force it. You know, I, this, is not, uh, this is not the season for me to complete my book. It's just not. Um, even though that's the timeline on my calendar, I'm having to give in a little bit to the natural rhythms. And what life is asking me to do right now is to rest. In so many ways, I'm being asked to rest. So how does that sit with you? How do you feel about rest? <laughs> Culture doesn't like it when we do this, right? The people that profit from our productivity want to keep us busy. Yeah. Yeah but um, our bodies heal when we rest. And so that's what I'm inviting you to consider. If you're having any kind of stress, any kind of extra grief like I am, or if it's just the season for you um, where you begin to notice these things in your body. So here's what I'm doing. When I'm finding myself craving sweets, 
I'm not giving into those cravings. I'm eating other healthy foods instead. I'm eating abundantly of as many fresh vegetables in as many different colors as I can find, knowing that the phytonutrients that my body and brain need for all of their cellular functions, including making the neurotransmitters that will help my brain um, to heal, right? Dopamine, serotonin, all of those good feeling neurotransmitters are literally made from the foods that we bring in through our diet. So make sure you're eating a variety of um, nutrient dense foods. That's what I'm doing. Sometimes those cravings for sweets can be satisfied in another sensory way. So what I'm finding myself doing, um, lighting candles that smell good. Make sure they're all natural. They're not gonna put toxins out into the air of your home. I bought a candy cane scented all natural shampoo the other day. I've got peppermint deodorant on today. Um, so I'm finding other ways to enjoy the scents um, and the sensory richness of the things I might be craving. So I'm not going to eat a sugared up candy cane, but I had a, the smell of it um, dripping all over me in the shower this morning, right? So um, my lip balm is a, is a wonderful flavor today, and my lotion was a wonderful flavor. Um, that brings me to another point of stress, right? So women are marketed to more than any other demographic for toxic shit to slather all over your body. <laughs> We're actually conditioned to think that we should not leave the house. We're not acceptable to be seen um, unless we have slathered a sufficient uh, amount of shit all over our bodies, particularly our faces, right? So this is not to cons like um, criticize anybody for their grooming habits, whatever you like. Um, there's days when I love to wear mascara and lipstick. There's days I love to do my hair. There's days when I don't, and I allow myself to follow those feelings. But the point here is that we're marketed to, a lot of those products contain very harmful toxic chemicals that are adding stress to you and um, potentially damaging your health, your hormone balance, and all of that then factors into our sleep and our weight and our food cravings, okay, because it contributes to stress. So I'm just here to say, that one of the things you can do to take care of yourself is to make sure that you are removing those toxins from your environment, um, your skin. Don't put anything on your skin that you're not willing to eat. <laughs> it ends up in all the same places, okay? Um, the women who join my Vibrant Woman course are going to learn a lot more about the hows and the whys and the what to do's um, in terms of all of these topics. So I definitely hope you're going to keep your eye open for that. There's still um, plenty of time to register and get in that course that starts in January. But in the meantime, I'm just here to say, um, if you're like me and you're feeling a little low and you're experiencing some grief, you know, we just have to find a way to take care of ourselves through these times as well. And I hope, I'm, I'm just here to encourage you, it is not easy, but I just want to say, um, if you're craving sweets, if you're not getting a good night's sleep, if you're not feeling like your best self, that's, of course it's okay. And there's plenty that you can do to nourish and nurture yourself through these times and through this process. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm easy to cry. I've given up the mascara for a while. Um, I'm easy to nap because I'm not sleeping through the night. So I've restructured my schedule to allow for that. I know the sunlight on my skin helps. And my dogs, with my dog's encouragement, I'm getting outside as many days as I can. Even if it's just the sunlight on your face and your hands because it's cold out, that will help, right? and just to take good care of yourself. So I hope this helps. I know that these tips that I share with you are the very same ones I'm using moment by moment through my own life. And I tell you, I'm finding them so supportive. And so um, like they're just holding me. That's what's holding me right now. And um, so, and I'd love to teach you more. I certainly hope that you're one of those people that will come on in the course and learn more. Uh, but in the meantime, please take good loving care of yourselves and reach out if you have any questions. Okay, beloveds, here's to the seasons and all of the seasons and the ways we have to live through them. Bless you all.